I know my students like to cut shapes out of foam using the same wire I cut out the thin foam sheets with. So you'll find some right there. This is Thin as Hair Special Nichrome Wire, which is short for nickel chromium, to cut your own scrap from foam from electronics packaging or foam from the grocery store You'll need a 9 volt battery that's not dead, scissors, tape, two forks, and thin cardboard from an empty cereal box or lots of other things that use thin cardboard. Cut out a piece of thin cardboard. Tape securely about 3 inches or 8 centimeters of the handles of the forks on the cardboard. The handle end should be close but not touching, about a quarter of an inch or 4 millimeters apart. And at the tine end, the closest tines should be about three and a half inches or nine centimeters apart. Handle the wire carefully. It breaks easily. Wrap it around the innermost tine if you can and tape it. Only the wire between the forks will get hot, not the wire wrapped around. If it's too hard to wrap around one tine, wrap around all of them. Tape that side. Your hot wire cutter is powered by a nine volt battery which looks completely different from these. These are all single cells and they all put out just one and a half volts of electrical pressure no matter what the size. Big ones last longer. When you add cells in series, in other words electrically connect plus to minus plus to minus, you add the voltages. The old two cell flashlights put out three volts. This LED headlamp has three cells 4.5 volts. So I took off the outer casing of a dead 9 volt battery and found it has six little cells inside electrically connected in series. So when you make sure you're touching both forks with the contacts, the nichrome wire warms up. If the wire is long enough, it's not so hot that it burns you right away. You have a couple of seconds, but it melts smoothly through foam. Pushing electricity through thinner wire that resists the flow of electricity causes electrical friction. When you rub your hands together, it causes friction, which you feel is heat. But this is electrical resistance heating, and it's used to heat a lot of things. If you use more flexible conductors than forks, these are thin welding filler rods, you keep the wire under some spring tension. When you keep the wire long, it stays safe and it doesn't make irritating smoke. If you shorten the wire, it'll get much hotter. I don't recommend it and the wire won't last long. Let's say you played around with nichrome wire and you really want to make a useful slicer for recycling your scrap packaging white foam. Here's the simplest way I know to slice foam for gliders. You'll need a piece of plywood 10 centimeters by 20 centimeters, or 4 by 8 inches smooth on one side. Luan is usually the cheapest and many building centers will make the cut for a nominal fee. The plywood needs to be up off the table more than an inch or 25 millimeters, but we can just use some books. By happy coincidence, thin cardboard that breakfast cereal and all sorts of food products are packaged in makes a perfect spacer between the plywood bottom and the hot wire so it slices foam to just the right thickness. When we get into very thin measurements, it can be difficult to measure with a ruler. There are special tools like this micrometer that'll do it if you know somebody with that kind of thing. But there is a cool workaround if you have a metric ruler. What if you increase the sample by an order of magnitude so if we took 10 pieces of cardboard stacked together and it measures about 6 millimeters, then just one piece of cardboard must be about 0.6 millimeters or 6 tenths of a millimeter. With metric, we just move the decimal point to the left. That's how you'll get to measure your thin slices of foam armed only with a metric ruler. So cut out two straight strips of food packaging cardboard Tape them to the edge with the following things in mind. Centered lengthwise, positioned exactly on the edge, the cardboard should not stick out at all, held on with tape that will not go any further into the board, and stretch as you tape the second end down. I'm exaggerating, but you don't want something like this. 
the nickel chromium wire would eventually burn into the cardboard, so we protect it with a single layer of aluminum foil. Just the regular cheap stuff. Make the strips at least 2.5 centimeters or an inch wide. It should cover the cardboard and also be taped on so no tape goes farther into the middle of the board. And the second end under a little bit of pull tension. Most of the aluminum will hang over the edge. You need some thin rubber bands to always keep the nichrome wire under some spring tension for two reasons. First, the wire will expand when heated, becoming loose. Second, a little pull might help flatten the cardboard spacers if they bump up. Cut the circles and make little loops in the ends of each. Cut about 20 centimeters or 8 inches of wire. Try not to kink the wire like this because it weakens it and this thin wire will break. Fortunately, nickel chromium hot wire is available in small lengths of a few meters. It's really cheap, pennies per meter, and cheap to mail. Stick about 12 millimeters or half an inch of the end of the nichrome wire into a rubber band loop and roll the rubber so the wire twists a lot. That'll hold it in. Do it to both ends. Tape down the rubber band ends with an equal amount of wire sticking out over each side and under some spring tension. This will be some pretty crude wiring, but I said simple. I stick the battery out of the way under the board. I'm taping one stripped wire to the far side aluminum and my switch is just keeping the other wire touching like this. The hot wire makes electrical contact with the aluminum, but it can still stretch and float. With only one battery, you'll cut very slowly. You can also hook up a second battery in series to speed up the cut. If you don't leave the wire connected, you can get a lot of cuts per battery. If you do a lot of this, you'll get an adjustable voltage supply, like a train transformer. Never use the first slice from a block. Unfortunately, what looks like a thick chunk of foam might actually have channels and voids molded in. Foam boxes that perishable foods are shipped in are something of an ecological disaster, but they yield lots of flat, convenient pieces. You can use a hacksaw blade outside to cut pieces to size. You can experiment with more control of the thickness. You could use several pieces of heavy paper instead of the packaging cardboard holding the nichrome wire up. Or you could, in effect, raise the table by taping something in the middle on the wood. Paper can burn. Aluminum doesn't burn, but you shouldn't let it touch the nichrome wire or it could electrically short it. Remember, you can accurately keep track of the foam thickness by putting 10 together and dividing. My students sometimes express disappointment that they can't cut pencils or fingers with the hot wire cutter, only foam. But not all foam seems to work well for super light gliders. I had high hopes for thin slices of these very smooth foams, either for below grade building insulation or produce packaging for grocery stores. But even when I cut this foam so thin I can almost see through it, it seems much heavier so I have to use more front weight and it flies much faster. I use the white stuff in which you can clearly see the little spheres it's made of. It's called EPS or expanded polystyrene. And even not all that's the same. It's classified by density. The packaging from computers and other electronics packaging is usually higher density. It's beautiful stuff, smooth and no holes. It's likely denser, so a little heavier, which means it might fly a little faster and require more front weight. If you don't have thin copper wire for the front weight, recycle some twisty ties, maybe pull off the paper or plastic to get to the wire.